Hey guys, so I wanted to do a review of the Sony Xperia XA1 Ultra, uh, which is the bigger brother of the XA1 phone, which I did actually enjoy in terms of the build quality. Uh, so I wanted to see what the bigger one was like here, and this is a 6 inch kind of fabulous device and will run you about €300 Euro compared to €200 Euro for the XA1 uh, little version. So I wanted to, you know, check the device out, see how the camera was, see how the gaming was uh, on this phone. So first we can talk about the build quality. Uh, similar to the XA1, very nice in terms of the omnibalance design here. Typical Sony, uh, you know, highly uh, constructed uh, with a nice metal chamfer going around the edges here. Uh, it is 6 inches, so it's quite a big phone, but it doesn't feel unwieldy. Uh, you know, the bezels are a little bit big at the top, but as you can see, they have... Uh, really uh, maximize the screen here and limited the bezel at the sides, uh, which is pretty nice and possibly like a preview of what's to come from Sony because they are going to be releasing a new flagship later in the year and you better use this design uh, because it is uh, very space efficient. Uh, you're getting a front facing selfie shooter you can see which is a little bit better than your standard one and a camera on the back here which is going to be quite an average camera, nothing too special I'm guessing but uh, we will check that out. No fingerprint sensor, unfortunately. Uh, usually we do get a fingerprint sensor with Sony phones, uh, but you do get a shutter button on the side here for your photography, which is nice. Uh, we're getting Type C as well, so you know they're not uh, behind on that one. Uh, so the build quality is very solid here, nicely constructed. Uh, it doesn't pick up too many fingerprints on the back, but there are a few fingerprints on the front, as you can see. Uh, not the best audiophobic coating. Uh, in terms of the display, you can see it uh, is a quite a nice display here, typical LCD technology. I have noticed it isn't quite as bright as what you're getting with the smaller version. Uh, so if we just put these on the same uh, brightness here, we can see uh, the actual brightness is pretty different here. It's like completely... Uh, much brighter on the XA1 for some reason. Uh, so you are going to have to bump the brightness up to the max here to make the most of the display, uh, which will have an effect on the battery life. Now, Sony's only put a 2700 battery in there, which is too small for a phablet. You know, it's, uh, it could have been much bigger, I think. Uh, but you are getting a front-facing flash compared to not on the XA1, so that is a bonus here. And the display is decent, you know, uh, I think uh, it's not going to be too bad on your eyes, but I think it could have been better at the same time. Uh, I think also in terms of the processor, we're getting a MediaTek processor. Uh, I hope Sony does start to move away from MediaTek processors because they do feel a little bit slow compared to Snapdragon uh, devices. They're alright when you're using like a few apps here. Let me just turn the screen brightness down again a little bit. Uh, if we just open up a few apps, you can see the actual speed is pretty good. It's a Helio P20 uh, processor, uh, so going into stuff here is nice and snappy on first look. But when you really start to use these processors, like multitasking, etc., you will notice that it starts to lag compared to what you're getting with the uh, Qualcomm solution or Exynos. So, you know, hopefully Sony will start putting Snapdragon 6 series in the more mid-range phones because it is, I think, a bit cost-cutting here. Uh, I think most basic users won't uh, think it's too bad, though, day-to-day -day in terms of the usage. Uh, in terms of the other stuff, the camera, I have been asking about with this. Uh, apparently it's got the same sensors as the Z series uh, of before, like the Z. Uh, three etc and day to day I think you're going to get some very nice shots from the device you can see in terms of your lower light here very decent uh, and uh, usable you know it's uh, not going to win any awards it's not up there with the latest uh, flagships but I think for you know social media it's more than sufficient really uh, I think it struggles a little bit in terms of the like background areas here you can see quite a lot of uh, exposure issues but it does some very nice uh, HDR shots uh, overall and is uh, quite a capable shooter here uh, so I will you know blow them up on your screen here so you can have a look uh, you can also see there's a, a nice uh, selfie shooter on this phone as well uh, which I think is good for social media again so if you're into that uh, it's a bonus uh, the video recording I think uh, is a bit more standard here it's nothing too special full HD uh, you'll get the job done again but you're not going to get the same kind of quality I think from the uh, Sony flagships. I think it does support steady shot though, so it's nice and smooth. And you know, uh, I think the zoom's a little bit grainy compared to what it could be. Uh, so it's a capable shooter here, you know, capable camera, uh, but a bit mid range at the same time. I think for the price you're paying, I think they could do a little bit better. 
because uh, you know for 300 euro you could uh, get the Honor 8 or something like that which has a far superior camera uh, solution uh, but the actual software is quite nice you know it does give you some things you can do here such as your AR effects and your manual mode as well you've got a superior auto that we all know and love I do think the camera app does need a revamp it has been like this for years now and it would be nice if we saw something different a little bit in terms of the actual software experience it's nice and Sony here you know in terms of uh, it's uh, a little bit stockish but at the same time you get the Sony uh, good stuff like your equalizer uh, if you go into the settings here you can see the Walkman uh, settings here and then you can optimize your headphones based upon what you're using so that's quite nice uh, you're also getting the like uh, app drawer here with the Sony recommended feature uh, so it's a Sony uh, kind of experience here very nice and well optimized I think for Android uh, in terms of the actual Android underneath this you are getting I don't think the latest version but you are getting the uh, Android 7.0 with the June patch level so not too bad here in terms of the uh, you know patch level but it would be nice if the Sony was releasing it on the latest Android version uh, so overall you know I think uh, it's a pretty solid device how does it fare in terms of gaming that is a good question so if we just go to a gaming session that I have started up here and um, we're just using this game uh, which is a helicopter kind of game here uh, so I think uh, it's coming with a, uh, a graphics card in there similar to Exynos devices. Uh, might have to double check that, but you can see the actual game experience because of that edge to edge display is very good here, and uh, it's got some nice uh, speakers as well. So I think my only concern would be the battery life on gaming because it may take quite a cold because you've got the screen button from high and the battery pack is not that big uh, but it's uh, very good here in terms of the frame rate you know, it's quite impressive but I don't think people who are buying this phone probably be buying it for gaming primarily I think uh, they're going to be using, probably playing a few games on it, but it won't be their primary gaming device. Uh, I think this would probably suit someone who's more using it for business purposes. So, uh, overall, a very capable device here. Just be aware of some of the shortcomings. You know, I think uh, in terms of the uh, overall stuff like the camera, the gaming, etc., it does the job. Uh, but there's definitely, I think, better choices on the market right now in terms of this price range, like, you know, your. Uh, the Axon 7 for example on an 8 they've all come down to the same kind of price level here uh, but I hope that Sony definitely uses this uh, kind of like bezel-less uh, design for its flagships it just doesn't make any sense to me why they keep putting bezels on their high-end phones when they've got an amazing design here with these two uh, so yeah just a quick little review here of the XA1 uh, Ultra uh, I hope you find it helpful and I'll see you in the next one cheers